In this video, we're going to take a look at using blocks. Now, if you're not using blocks in your drawings currently, um, this is one thing you really need to start doing. Uh, my rule of thumb is you create a block anytime you use an object more than once in a drawing. That way, what you can do with a block is if, if the design needs to change or if the, the graphical representation needs to change, if you have it as a block, you can redefine the block and it will update it everywhere that the, um, the symbol exists. It also, I'm also going to show you a way if you've got a bunch of objects that are not currently blocks and you want to replace them with a block, I'm going to show you one little quick way to do it, um, how to change those things out. All right, so let's get started. I've got a drawing here, just a simple elevation of a house, and I've got some windows in it. Now, I drew these windows just using regular rectangles, as you can see when I select them. Okay, so let's say that I draw this and then I submit the drawing and somebody comes back to me and says, you know what? I need to update those windows. They look too plain. We need to add some more detail to them. Well, the problem is, is that since they're all individually drawn, I would have to go and redefine each one. So let's just say that, that what I wanted to do is I wanted to offset, uh, just add a couple more lines in it. So I'm just going to do an offset of, let's say, uh, two inches. And then maybe offset another half of an inch inside of that. All right, so let's say that was adequate for the amount of detail that I needed. But now I have to go and either make the same changes to all of these, or I need to erase them and copy this one over, or whatever. Now, had this been a block, I could have simply redefined the block and it would have updated everywhere. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and make this a block. Now, to create a block, there's a couple ways you can do it. At the command line, you can type B for block and hit the space bar or the enter key. Uh, either one of those give the return and it brings up the block definition dialog box. I can also go over here on my home tab and if you look over here, there there's a section for block and I, I can tell it to create a block right here and it'll bring up the same dialog box. Or I can go to my insert tab and I can see that I have that same option for block over here and of course there's a couple of other options if I pull down uh, click the little arrow to pull it down so for right now I'm just gonna go back to my home tab and I'm just gonna tell it to create a block and here's our block definition dialog box so the first thing I want to do is give it a name so I'm just gonna call it window uh, dash zero one then it wants to know a base point and the base point is the point at which you're going to insert the block so I usually like to think of how is a how is a block most likely going to change. For example, if I want to, to ch redefine this block, what point would be my constant? So I'm going to actually create this block based on the upper the the midpoint of the top of the block. So I'm going to tell it to pick a point for my base point. I'm going to O snap to the midpoint of the window up here. And then it needs to me to select the objects for the block. It's telling me right now that no objects are selected. So I'm going to tell it to select objects. And I'm going to just put a crossing around here. Since these are P-lines, it selected all of it. I could have just as easily selected over the whole thing. I'm going to hit Enter. It tells me now I have three objects selected. And then for behavior, it wants to know, do you want it to be annotative? Which that would be more if this was symbolic. Uh, meaning that it really wasn't drawn to scale. It just You just wanted it to be a certain size and that it was linked to the scale of the sheet. Um, for example, if you were drawing a flow diagram or something like that and you had a symbol of a valve or something and the valve was more uh, represented by a symbol and not the actual dimensions of the valve, you would want it to be linked to the scale of the drawing so that it always plot at the same scale. So that's what annotative would allow you to do. In this case, it's not going to be annotative. It's not going to be linked to the scale. It's physically the dimensions that we need it to be. All right. Uh, it wants to know if you want it to scale uniformly. That means that you can't change the X and the Y scale of the block. Uh, and we're not going to check that because I'm going to show you some things with that in a little bit also. And the other thing is to allow exploding. So once the block's been uh, inserted, do you allow the block to be exploded? And sometimes you, you may want to check that to where you can explode the block and modify it. Uh, make small modifications to it in certain circumstances, or you might want to unselect that and not allow the block to be exploded. I'm going to go ahead and leave it checked for now. All right, and then you can set your units and put a description and all that. The thing that I want you to notice here in the bottom left-hand corner is this option that says Open and Block Editor. 
In the next lesson, we're going to take a look at that in more detail. But for right now, let's just unselect that and tell it OK. All right, and one other thing I'm going to show you in this box. Um, it, set, it has the options here when you select your objects to retain them, to convert them to a block, or to delete them. So it's talking about the objects that you originally selected. Whenever you finish executing the block command, do you want those objects to disappear? You would tell it to delete. And then the block definition is in your drawing, and then you can go and insert them wherever you want. Retain means that the individual lines that, or objects that you selected stay in the drawing just as they were. Not a block, but individual lines. But the block definition gets saved into your drawing. And convert to block means that it replaces the individual line with a newly created block. And that's the one that I chose. And so now you can see that I have a, a block right here. My insertion point is the only grip that I have. So I could actually drag it around by the insertion point and I have a block in my drawing now. Now that didn't do me any good for these other drawings, these other uh, windows, because they weren't blocks. But I'm going to show you a quick way to allow you to uh, kind of copy uh, this block around. Now one thing you can do is you can just simply copy, pick it, pick any point on it, and go and, and copy right over the top of it, but then you still have to go back and erase the ones that were there previously, these, these rectangles. So had you created them on different layers or something like that, you could isolate the layer and delete them or something like that. But here's another just a real quick way to do this. I'm just going to copy all these objects over here randomly. It doesn't matter how far. And, um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase all of these. And then I'm going to do a copy. And I'm going to select this window right here. But when I pick my insertion points, I'm going to pick them over here because everything's relative. I'm going to pick that corner. And then I'm just going to copy around and pick all the corners of my existing windows over here and therefore it's copying them the exact same distance over here. So now I can delete these and now everything here is a block. So if later we come in here and we say you know what I need to modify this I can come in here I can right click on it and I can there's two ways to modify a block you can tell it to edit the block in place or you can use a block editor. So for right now I'm just going to edit the block in place and it's verifying the block that I'm going to edit. I'm going to tell it OK. Notice everything else kind of grays out. You don't even see the other window blocks. And I'm just going to stretch this down 12 units. And then whenever I'm finished, I simply select Save Changes. I tell it OK. And now all my windows have been updated in the drawing. OK, well that's your introduction to blocks. In the next video, we're going to take a look at using dynamic blocks and how we can add a lot more intelligence to our blocks uh, through that. So for now just make sure that you've got this part down because this is the building block, uh, the foundation for learning how to use blocks and dynamic blocks. So experiment with this a little bit, add it to your own drawings, use your own application for this and uh, get used to using blocks anytime you have to have a drawing, uh, an object that's copied several times in a drawing. It just makes your editing process much much faster.